What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. So behind me, we've got the Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. It's looking a lot better than before, but you probably wouldn't notice by me just showing it to you guys right here. But this car did have a lot of fire damage. We cleaned it all up, painted it. So last episode, we got the firewall done, all the engine bay done. And now in this episode, we're gonna do a little bit. But before that, we got Brett over here. He's helping us out today. And then over here, I'll just mention, there's a lot of guys that are here for the Hellcat Ram. So we got the Hellcat Ram here. We're doing some stuff to it. It's, uh, I got a few more things I wanna do and share with you guys. So if you guys are interested in buying it, it will be at the auction block. But we are getting custom door panels in here. We're gonna be doing the conversion. So right now it's just got roll up windows. We're gonna be converting it to power. It's gonna get leather stitch door panels, full power door locks, power mirrors, power windows. So we'll have that coming for you here shortly. So the goal for this video is there's a few small areas. So once we clean up the major areas, we're starting to notice some of the smaller areas that we got to tend to. So right here at the bottom of the A pillar, it's got a little bit of char here and we almost were okay, but the very bottom, if you can see that in the camera, it's a little bit of a lighter orange here. So we're gonna sand this, clean this up. And in order to do that, we're gonna pop the door off so we can kind of get in here and uh, probably get the hinges cleaned up and see if we can kind of get this stuff looking all good. And then the other area we're gonna be messing with today is here. So the top of the roof here, like I said, it didn't get like crazy hot or anything because if it did, this whole thing would be warped, but it obviously got warm enough to bake the paint off it. So we're gonna sand this down and then we're gonna try and get this blended in. I do have to replace this. I don't have one here today, but we'll probably end up ripping this off. It's just held on by double-sided tape. Take this off and then uh, once a new one comes in, we can paint this uh, weather stripping as well. So first things first, let's pop this door off and then we can get to work. Alright guys, a little progress update. So a lot of this junk on the hinges thankfully cleaned up. So we're good all there, we cleaned that out. Ended up doing a bit of sanding here so that we can blow that in. Brett sanded up here on the roof line, got all the spugats out of there and the crusties. So now we're down to bare metal. We're gonna do a little bit of self-fetching primer. What else? That's it, right? Yeah, that's it. All we did was take some uh, P320, feather everything else nice and smoothly gonna try and blend everything in self etch all the bare metal um and that point then we'll come back do you want to point out the white primer thing yeah which was kind of unique so because in the front we really didn't see white primer but up here actually on the base of the car we actually see white primer and actually where the roof line comes to the curvature here you actually see factory body filler looks like they skim coated in as well here in a few places um, it just must have been the crease when they actually dented it as far as when they molded the pieces together It must have had a little crease here and there. It's um, kind of interesting. You can see like you can see Factory primer like gray primer then you can see this white and then they laid the orange on yeah. top of it But like over here It was all just factory primer. You can see where we sanded here There's no white but anywhere where it's visible like all of a sudden you can see factory gray over here where it's visible orange you can see they have white underneath it so kind of interesting so we're going to follow the same thing we're going to self-etch primer it in the self-etching primer which is like almost like a grayish green once we do that we'll sand that then we'll end up putting white primer over top it sanding that all in and then we can go to orange right absolutely so we're gonna get to it i'll show you guys what we got in a minute here we're just taping things up all right little update for you guys so we got some self-etching primer on there Brett's just sanding that part we already scuffed this all up. So that's all sealed up. So we're gonna scuff this a little bit more and then we'll be on to our white primer. Hey, all right, you guys. So a little bit of progress. So we went ahead, you guys saw the self-etching primer on there. Now we're in white primer. And after we did this, we did probably, I wanna say three, maybe four coats of white primer. And then what we did was we blocked all this in and you can see here how we faded it into our orange. That way we don't have any lumps when we go to color and clear. So we kind of just blended this all in here, sanded back because what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the clear all the way up to here. So we'll probably bring color to maybe an inch or so past there, kind of fade it in, then clear is gonna go even further. So that's that. And then we're also just doing a little bit more here. We gotta get a couple more coats of white primer on this. This was uh, 
reacting with something. We kept having a chemical reaction where it kept bubbling up, so we had to keep sanding it, and we ended up just going all the way back down to metal, self-etching it. Now we're in white primer, but this one is a little bit behind that one, just for those reasons. So now we're gonna clean all this up. We're gonna push this thing outside. We're gonna clean it off, blow it off, wax and grease remover it, probably bully dog prep it. Absolutely. So we'll bully dog prep it, and then we're almost ready to go into orange paint. So let's do it and see how she comes out. I sound like Kenny from South Park. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Kenny from South Park. Like in white. <laughs> and we're about to make it orange. <laughs> there, that's all you need to know. Um, what do you want to start with? The roof or the part that doesn't matter probably? Probably the part doesn't matter. That way you can get used to the adjustments. Uh, can we put a piece of tape right there? Yep. Don't worry about just covering all in that first coat. There you go. Perfect. Good. Yep. Come up. Oh, 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 come over here. Uh, Inside the door. Yeah. Yep. Right. Um, we gotta figure out how. We, maybe I'll we'll go around the other way with the hose. Yep. So we're taking the here with color, right? Yes. And a little bit farther from that. Yep. So about two inches away from the white. But, yep, right there. But Perfect. You want me to fade in this way, right? Yeah, but I want you to start over here and then end on that side. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's why I'm worried about it spitting. It came out nice though. There's a little pug in it though. That's okay. Keep going. You wait, 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 wait. More than that? That's all. Well, come over here. Hit this side once. There you go. Okay. It's laid down nice, just inside the bug. What do you think? Just a mist. Like that? Yep. Do it again. Don't make it fucking noise. There you go. I don't know why it's something somewhere. I don't know if it's the cup. I don't know if it's a gun. This is what a bummed out Brett looks like. <laughs> well, you win some, you lose some, right? We did. Hey, we had a great win on one, but unfortunately, you know, hey, we ain't afraid to show our mistakes and uh, we'll come back and uh, redo it again. That's right. So here, let me give you guys a rundown. So anyways, we ended up starting to spray, but the gun was making a weird noise. Me and Brett couldn't really figure it out. But it seemed to be some sort of needle adjustment. We messed with the needle and then it stopped making this weird squeaky noise. But while it was making that squeaky noise, it was just laying down like terrible spray pattern. It was just orange peeling like crazy. So it was orange peeling over here when we were laying down this color. Not only that, but we ended up getting two bugs that joined the party. One there, <laughs> one here. We tried to pick this guy out and it just, yeah, we couldn't get him out. We were trying to lift him out with tape and ended up just lifting the paint with it. And it was not a love bug either. No. If you know in Florida, we have these notorious love bugs. I don't know what that thing, he was just a little little gnat looking thing. But ended up correcting the gun and we didn't have any bugs in this one. And um, our spray pattern actually was decent because it was weird. If we did like short little bursts, it was okay. But as we were like, if you tried to hold it, then the gun would start making this weird noise and obviously we were doing this whole piece here and it just started making a weird noise started spraying out like crap but here we ended up clear coating as you can see so we got this all done this we were originally saying we didn't really need to do but we figured since we're here we might as well freshen it up so all of our hinges and this whole area looks nice now too blend it into here and then we'll end up wet sanding and uh buffing this in we're not too sure how this is going to match our what is it? I guess six year old paint at this point. Yeah. Six, maybe seven year old paint. So chances are this is gonna be brighter than that, but probably end up respraying the whole car at some point, but not anytime in the immediate, immediate future we're gonna get the car running. But in order to correct this, we're gonna have to wait for it to dry. We're gonna end up having to sand this down to get the weird spray pattern out of there. And also we got to sand, honestly, it ended up laying down pretty decent afterwards, but did you look at this? 
Yeah. It's like it actually laid down somewhat flat after it dried. It really did. Unfortunately, it's just that one little... <laughs> I know. If we didn't have this bug, we probably would have just sent it with the clear and we would have been half decent, but... We got the bug mark, so now we gotta sand that before we can get back to the going. So, anyways. Yeah, the main focus is just getting this back into a roller chassis for us to yep. get it put back together, and uh, then we can focus on the paint later, actually, just get that windshield in and everything else. Heck yeah, but it definitely looks better for sure. I mean, not having that smoke damage stuff is better than anything, but we wanna make this look as good as possible, so. Probably most people, or I, I don't know if I should speak for everybody, a lot of people would probably just send it on this, but we're trying to be as picky as possible, so we'll, we'll get it right and we'll sand it. So we're going to wrap up for tonight. Brent is cleaning the gun, and then uh, you'll see me sanding this probably tomorrow so I can get it ready to paint again. All right, so it's the next day, and like I mentioned, so we are going to get some stuff right. So this is now all cured. So there we go. This came out pretty decent once we figured out the issue with the gun, and uh, we'll have to wet sand this into here, but... Pretty happy with how that ended up coming out. You guys remember it before, it was all charred in here. This was looking kind of baked and now it's spicy. So up here, like I said, we got a bug here that we had an issue with, another little bug there. And the gun wasn't spraying all that smooth. Probably could have sent it and would have came out decent had we uh, figured out the issue with the gun. But anyways, I'm gonna sand this down with 400. So I'm gonna block it right now with 400. I'll pull the tape back. And then uh, I'm gonna end up seeing how much I need to cut this down so that it's a smooth surface and we get all the nonsense out of here. And then we can actually respray this. So let me block this out. All right, so we've got it blocked out, and then down here, we pretty much, with that little <laughs> incident, it went right back down to metal there. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a little dab of self-etching primer, then we'll do the white primer on top, and then we'll be ready for paint again here. So I'm just gonna do that, block it in, and uh, all of our kind of orange peel nonsense is gone now that I blocked that out with the 400. And yeah, we'll just keep trucking along here. Okay, here we go. So we self-etched, primered it, and then we put white primer over top of that. And now I gotta sand this all smooth. So I'm gonna block all this, and then we can get back into our orange. Also, one other touch-up spot I wanted to do is just over here. Some of this was uh, had some sort of reaction, so I sanded this back down, re-etched it, and uh, I'm gonna shoot that one I'm doing up here, but that's not really a visible spot, but just something I wanna touch up. So let me get this, and then we'll get back into paint. All right, she's taped up, masked off once again. So we're gonna do color on this section here. And I left myself a couple inches gap. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do color to here and then I'm gonna take this off and then we're gonna clear from there back. So that is the plan. And that way we kind of have a little bit of a fade in for the clear so I can kind of buff it up into there. But everything's clean, wax and grease removed. I'm gonna hit that one spot in the front, but that's about it, let's get painting. All right, so slight change of plans, you guys. What we ended up doing was I ended up wet sanding that whole area, got it all smooth, and then you could still see like the change in color because like I said, this is the correct paint color, but there's different shades and this is obviously aged, so it wasn't matched with the paint gun. I actually have to find a new place to get paint from because the place that I'm buying the paint from just goes off the color code. They don't have any different shades and you can't bring something to them where they can use uh, one of those tools where they can essentially see what shade you have. So what we're gonna do is rather than have that big line go through here and probably end up seeing it, I ended up bringing it to here, scuff this all up, and I'm gonna blow it in and fade it from here. So probably gonna just dust in my color to here, and then I'm gonna go from here to there with clear. That way we have an area that we can wet sand into this, because 
If we had it done across here, you would have seen like a weird kind of color change right in the middle of our roof line. Whereas over here, it's only like a four inch piece versus like a 16 inch piece of color change. So probably less likely to notice it there. And at the same time too, this is probably gonna get entirely painted at some point, but just so it's not a complete eyesore right now, we're gonna try and do this. Plus we're learning at the same time. So this is all scuffed, prepped. You can see everything's dusted off and it's wax and grease removed. So we'll put this outside, paint it, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, you guys. So ended up getting this painted last night. I was gonna film it, but uh, I was just in a rush before we lost daylight. But anyways, it came out really, really good. One tiny little bug joined the party. We are, you know, painting outdoors. So it's kind of inevitable, but came out really, really good. So let's go ahead, untape it. Like I said, we're gonna end up having to wet sand this once everything really, really cures. But this is the next day and looks really, really good. So came out and laid out pretty nice. So let's get this untaped. All right, check that out, you guys. So it cured really, really nice. So like I said, we're gonna have to wet sand and polish this. And the color looks pretty dang close in my opinion. The only thing is you gotta remember this has never been polished since it was you know, produced. So this is years of oxidization and stuff. So once we wet sand to this line, like I said, I kind of only brought the color to here and then clear from there on. So once we wet sand this, polish this all up, I don't think you'll barely see that line there. So this is like gleaming because it's brand new, but like if you look from here to here, those two colors, I know light's gonna hit it slightly different, but it looks pretty good. On the other side, it's uh, the factory weather stripping. I think I mentioned this already, is a different color and it was already like that. You can see is a different color, but if you look here to here, like that is really, really close. Again, this here is super dull and not polished. Also, there is a clear bra on here that's kind of changing things ever so slightly. So that will probably have to come off because it's the clear bras on the other side, but yeah. Same thing, we've only got this four inch section, so that was a lot more work than I wanted to do, but just to make it consistent, had we like cut that line through there, it would have been super, super noticeable, you guys. So with this only having a small section of transition from you know new to old, it's just a lot better off. So that is most of the paint work. We've got a little bit of stuff to contend with. There was a little bit of, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, up here, I gotta clean off a lot of that nonsense. So I'm gonna see how much of that wipes up. And then I also probably have to unfortunately look for a sunroof because there's that rain gutter that's right there in the front and it's plastic and it's actually riveted to the sunroof. So the sunroof is you know in decent shape, but the problem is that silly rain gutter got a little bit of heat and it's kind of drooping on that side. Probably would work, but I'm gonna probably just try to replace it. So. I wanna clean all this up, see how much of it's just smoke, and if any of it needs to be painted, then we'll just dust it in, but you're never gonna see it once you put the headliner in, but that's kind of our next little mini project here. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned all inside of there. 99% of it came off, but there's one spot in the same area on the top here where it's a little uh, charred. So I'm gonna go ahead and just dust inside. Again, never gonna see this stuff, you guys, but you guys know how I am. I like to do things as clean and OEM plus, even better than factory. So I made this little uh, drop sheet room in here so nothing gets anywhere. But yeah, I'm gonna go in here, dust all in here. This is the spot that I was telling you about. A little bit charred here but uh, not a big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and we will just kind of dust it in. A lot of this stuff can wipe off, but since I'm gonna do this, I might as well dust in the rest of it. And uh, yeah, 
Should be looking decent, but yeah, everything is drop sheeted right now all the way around. So we're good to go. You also probably noticed that I did remove the sunroof, so that wasn't too bad to take out. I've never taken one of these out before, but she's out. Let's get some paint on there. All right, guys, well, apparently I forgot to hit record, so you guys didn't see me paint it, but there she is. So now it looks all fresh under here. I did it just the same as before, actually better. I just did uh, base color. Didn't bother doing any clear. Didn't go crazy with anything either. Like I said, the factory was barely any orange, but I did more orange just because uh, I like to do things a little bit better. But anyways, there she is. So we got it all orange, and now I can finally say I am done painting for now. So gonna be some other stuff as well, and I still want to get a PDR guy out here to remove stuff like this. And then you can see there, it's like right down and some paint chunks missing, plus this uh, spoiler needs to be uh, painted as well. So we're not completely done painting, but I am done painting in the sense that we can start putting things back together, put the interior back in, or at least what I have of the interior, put the dash, all the electronics back in, and start getting this thing ready for the engine. So pretty exciting stuff, you guys. Took a lot to get here. Like I said, still a little bit of small paint, but at least huge success. This came out really, really good. I also got to order the weather stripping for the other side is missing over there and then we got to paint that but also i will keep you guys up to date on stuff we're gonna have to polish this so we blend this in um just that line there but i'm not gonna do it until it fully dries but either way super happy you guys if you guys are liking this project give it a thumbs up because i'm super excited honestly this was really new for me and a little bit of a challenge because i'm not a paint guy by any means but it took me a little bit longer than i wanted to but super excited with the results and how it all turned out but Thanks for watching guys. If you guys haven't seen all the other videos on how we got to this point, go check out the rest of the series. A lot more on the way. And uh, now we're gonna get into the fun stuff in my opinion. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.